Welcome everyone to the mutated Java APM client Selenai APM session by Amotan. So uh, without further ado, over to you. Thank you, Imesh. Uh, hi, everyone across the world. Um, I'm excited to be speaking about Selenide APM today. So this is a small introduction about me. Um, you know, my name is Samudan Shaktivel, um, and uh, I work as a lead developer in test at Findra. Um, I'm a tech YouTuber. I have a testing YouTube channel where I teach testing and automation. Um, and most importantly, um, I'm an open source contributor. I contribute mostly to the Selenide APM project, which I'm going to speak today. Um, it's very close to my heart because I was working on APM for a very long time now. Um, and, uh, you know, contributing to this Selenite project uh, gives me much pleasure. So I'll be happy to speak about it today. Um, yeah, at my leisure, uh, everyone in India used to play cricket and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cricket player. Um, I played professionally when I was in India. Uh, I play for fun when I'm here in the US. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much about me. Um, yeah, the Selenite APM is is the uh, library that I'm going to speak today. Um, I call it as mutated Java APM client because um, you know we have built a lot, lot of wrappers around APM. Um, so it's 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 gonna help us to write concise, fluent APM tests, and we are going to see how it it's gonna save thousands of hours for you to um, you know while writing APM tests. Again, uh, you might ask questions, right? Um, when I have APM, why should I try Selenide APM, right? The important thing is it is free, uh, you know, and it is open source. We built it on top of APM. Um, we have a concise and precise API, uh, which means, if, uh, you know, you could write your tests uh, in, a, in a very simple code, with a very simple code, and it can also be fluently uh, readable. And it's very stable, right? Uh, normally, if you work with APM, you face a lot of these errors. And uh, and all these problems have been solved with Selenide APM. For example, you don't have to write a lot of boilerplate. There is no AJAX problems or you, that you won't get any state element reference exception because we handle that internally by ourselves. So you don't have to worry about all these things. Again, you don't have to manage weights. We handle it for you. And we take screenshots for you. You don't have to write a single piece of code to do any of these. Um, it's, it's much more than this. It's not that this, but it's just much, much more than this. Um, and importantly, you you know, Selenide APM lets you to focus only on your business logic and writing your tests. Um, you don't have to worry about whether this code will work, whether this will work on this particular device, whether this will work on Android, whether this will work on iOS. We don't have to worry about it because we have built wrappers and also we have written tests to run them on different devices, make sure it, it works on all the devices. And APM is very good for driving your mobile apps. Uh, it's, it's a low level tool, it's not a testing tool. Uh, but Selenide APM, it's for testing. It comes with inbuilt assertions, like you could write assertions in a much easier way. In APM, you have to rely on JUnit, TestNG, or AssertJ for writing your assertion. But those are not um, you know, user-centric assertions. Um, you know, the assertions won't be as good as you while writing APM, so Selenide APM. Um, and this is very high level. This will be very useful for writing uh, APM tests. For example, uh, imagine you want to write an APM code for uh, waiting, right? Uh, let's say there is an element like this. You want to wait for this to be uh, located on the screen before you make some operations. Here, you have to deal with all these boilerplates. Even though you know how to do it, uh, uh, you know, it's fa just familiar code, but it's still complicated. You with all these stuff and look at the readability. Right? If somebody trying to read what is expected conditions, nobody knows what it is, right? So um, it's very difficult to deal with all these things. Um, similarly, if you want to wait for an element um, to have a text, all right? So you have to use text to be present in element and your code looks like this. The similar code will become much readable if you try to use Serenade APM. For example, um, you could use dollar, dollar, um, is is similar to your driver dot find element. You are trying to find an element using ID, and you are just waiting for it to become visible, right? It's it's very easy. It's readable as well, right? Again, you are trying to wait for an element to become visible and editable before you make some operations on it. 
again this is this accepts just multiple um, condition variable arguments which means you can add as many conditions you want you don't have to write multiple statements here you can just pause on whatever you want to wait for um, and then you can also either use interactable instead of using visible and editable and you can also provide custom wait time for example this particular element takes a lot of time to um, load so you just want to uh, you know change the seconds that you want to wait for it right again all these internally uses web driver wait um, so we are not building anything new we are just uh, creating a beautiful wrapper around it so our code becomes much readable again if you want to wait for an element to have a text you can use should have text again you can see should be should have should they they all one and the same um, you can use whatever you want for better readability for example, if you are using with text, you can use should have text. So the readability of the code is much better, right? And you can also wait for an element to get disappeared and it, it can just use should disappear, right? Uh, and most importantly, when dealing with weights and everything, you don't have to worry about stale element reference exception. It will never happen if you use selenate API. Uh, again, uh, the same weights you could also use with driver.find elements. Here it is denoted by double dollars. Um, Again, you can wait for an element to become uh, driver dot find elements. And if you are trying to wait for the size to become three, you can also wait for uh, the size to become greater than zero. And you can also wait for number of elements to have text in, in this particular order, right? So you are trying to find multiple elements and you want to wait um, until it has the text A, B, C, and D, E, F, right? So that's how easy it is to write weights. Again, working with deep links is a very complicated task. The reason being, it, it works a little differently on Android and differently on iOS. And if you want to write a code for it, uh, for Android, you have to use immutable map.off, you have to load this deep link URL and app package, and you have to call the execute script method. But in iOS, you have to launch the Safari, you have to identify the uh, URL bar using predicate string. If you use any other locators, it can be flaky. I mean, you will spend a lot of time you know, locating their uh, URL, what is the locator for the URL, why it is getting flaky sometimes, you know, all these efforts are, are saved if you're using, uh, if you're using um, Selenade API. Again, you have to enter the deep link URL, you need to press enter. And this works a little differently on iOS simulator and real devices. And also based on your auto accept alerts capability, you know, uh, you have to click on an open button. Sometimes you don't have to click on it. Right, and this will be displayed only on simulator. So there are a lot of complications here. You have to learn this, all these things. See, all whatever you are doing, you are you are not writing your business test. You are basically trying to understand APM, which you don't have to do uh, uh, with with Selenite APM. So with Selenite, what what you can do is there is an open Android deep link, and you can just pass the deep link and the app package. For iOS, you can call the open iOS deep link and uh, you can just pass the deep link URL. You don't have to worry about whether it is emulator, simulator, Android, iOS. You just need to call these methods and it will take care of all of these things by itself. Again, the another beautiful reason why you want to try Selenite uh, is, is because if you try to write um, uh, locators in, in, in APM, you have to use something like XPath. Um, you are trying to use content description attribute to find this views, right? This is very noisy. The reason being, you can make mistakes here. Um, you can, you can, uh, you know, miss a single quote, and then after running the entire test, you will realize, hey, oh, I missed a single quote, and that's why it's failing. So instead of all these complexity, even though you are very familiar with this code, this is still complex code. You can simply use here. We are using content description, right? So we can just say uh, by content description. And what is the content description value? So you remove all the complexities around it, and you also trying to make your code much readable that anyone can understand. Again, if you are trying to construct an XPath using contains, you can um, contain text with a with a value of this. You can simply use with text. So again, by by text is for equality, exact equality. It will check for exact equality. With this for containing. So it will try to check if the if there is an element with the text. Uh, containing this right? again you can also use with tag and description which will look for android.widget.text view of the of the class or the tag and uh, the text attribute containing this right instead of writing a complex text path like this you could use like what um, 
again um, performing native events is very important um, for example if you want to perform a tap a double tap um, you know you want to tap based on coordinates um, and then you want to do a long press or you want to do a drag and drop um, you have to write a lot of code in apm believe me um, before java client 8 um, we use a different class and now we are using sequence class before it's touch action now sequence you don't have to worry about all this if you are using um, you know selenium you have you can just call these tap double tap methods and it will take care of all these complexities for you again there is something called as combined by we have by class we have apm by class but this is combined by that is built in in selenium which you can make your life easy for example imagine you have a page with very similar elements where the locators um, uh, have just the, uh, you know, for here, for example, this locator has views and this has ratings, nothing else changes here. In these cases, instead of creating 100 locators, you may rely on creating a dynamic X path like this, but the problem with this approach is you have to write if condition to determine whether this, this is an Android, you can use Android locator. But if the session is iOS, you can use iOS locator. Again, you reduce a lot of complexity with dynamic X path, but um, you know, you still write a clumsy if condition. But in case of Selenide, there is a method called a, a class called as combined by where Android, you can find the element using text and iOS, you can find the element using the same text. Um, and you can just do a driver.find element with this by and should be visible dot click. And you don't have to rely on XPath. As we know, instead of writing a very complicated XPath, um, Selenite supports uh, a very custom uh, selector classes which you can use, right? So by text menu, and you can just, you don't have to worry about the if conditions that you have written here, right? The code becomes much easier to write um, and, it, and, and it is also very easy to read about, right? And then um, imagine if you, you, I know if, if you have worked on uh, APM, you might have written a lot of code to make a, um, your your, uh, driver to scroll to a particular element to make some action on it. Again, touch action is deprecated in Java client greater than H. You have to use frequent class. It's not a straightforward uh, process to scroll to an element. In web, web it's easy, but in, in APM, it's very difficult. Um, again, if you are interacting with elements instead of by locators, uh, you have to use is displayed for Android but um, for iOS, you have to use visible attribute. If you use this displayed, you won't get uh, good results because it might throw exception. You have to handle those exception. So you have to use visible attribute if you want to scroll for iOS. Um, again, if you are dealing with by locators, you have to use find elements uh, and check if the size is greater than zero to, to determine when you have to stop the scrolling. Or, um, so again, iOS, you have to again use visible attribute to understand when you have to start scrolling uh, so that the element is already found right this is very complicated plus right as a, as a test user i don't have to deal with all these things if you use selenide you can just say find element by text and whatever the text you want and just scroll to click what it does is it scroll down a maximum of 30 times to find these elements um, you don't have to worry about any of these uh, sequence class, uh, whether it is Android, iOS, you don't have to worry about it. We return all this complicated code, we wrap them inside this method, so you can just directly use it. Again, why we have um, kept a maximum of 30 times is because there are certain apps like Instagram, Facebook, where the scroll is infinite. You cannot scroll infinitely, right? So the session may not end. So we, ha we have kept a maximum scroll times that is 30 but it, it is customizable for example if you want to scroll up you can also scroll up you can also do a scrolling up of maximum of 15 times you can also control how many times you want to scroll again the similarly you can also swipe to the left and right based upon your needs it's as simple as that again we have built a lot of commands over apm so you can use all of these but for some reasons you have a peculiar use case like you want to perform a triple click on an app which nobody wants to do, but you, if you have such requirements, right, you can create uh, that element, uh, for example, that command. So you, you can create a class called triple click, which implements the command interface from Selenite. What it does is it, it, it has an uh, abstract method called execute, where you can provide your own implementation, right? And then in your test code, you can just directly wait for an element to become visible 
and you call the execute method and create an instance of this class. So it performs the triple click. So you are not compromising your code quality, right? You are still extending more commands to your uh, to your framework and you, you, you don't compromise on your um, existing code readability. Um, I think it's time for demo. So, uh, you know, I have created a very simple project uh, just to demonstrate the power of Selenate here. Um, for example, uh, you know, I have added a couple of dependencies. Uh, one is Selenate APM and the other one is JUnit. Uh, for now, we can also use TestNG, but I prefer JUnit 5. Um, so what is the benefit of using Selenate APM is um, when you are working with APM, uh, you have to add both your APM and Selenium dependencies in your project. And, and there can be a version mismatch causing a lot of issues. So if you are if you are using Selenate APM, it internally uses Selenium and APM, but it maintains the version compatibility. So if you are using 4.3, which is the latest version from Selenate, um, it contains the latest uh, Selenium and APM version. So you don't have to deal with these, uh, you know, uh, version related problems. Good. Now, this is how we write a very typical test in uh, uh, APM, right? So if you want to launch an Android uh, app, uh, for example, I have an app here with me. Um, so that has, uh, that is this API demos app. And I want to perform certain tests, right? For example, I want to click on this views. Um, and then I want to scroll all the way down, find until where the web view is, click on it. And then I want to go back. Uh, for some reasons, I cannot see the back button here. Um, so maybe I... So I want to go back. And uh, after coming back, I want to scroll all the way up, find this expandable list, click on it. Um, custom adapter, I want to click on that. And I want to do a long press and see if the sample menu is getting displayed here, right? Imagine, uh, as you all have already used APM, uh, imagine in your mind how long it will take to create this particular test, right? We are going to create this particular test with uh, with Selenite and uh, compare the time, right? So again, this is a very simple code uh, to launch the uh, uh, app uh, and uh, all you have to do is, even if you want to create your own driver, um, you know, with the old way, you can do that. And now uh, you can, what you can do is, instead of writing it all this here, um, uh, Selenium gives a beautiful way of wrapping that in a separate class. If you know open close principle, we are gonna exactly follow that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna create um, a provider class. Um, so for example, I create, um, AP demos uh, provider. And I'm, there is an interface called as um, web driver provider. And if you implement this particular create driver method and you can move all your um, logic to this class. Right. And you can just simply return this. Right. What it does is uh, it moves all this noisy code outside uh, so you don't have to worry about all this. So now all this complex logic of creating your driver instance is in a separate provider class, right? Let's say for, for iOS, you want to have a different code, right? Because you want to use XEUAD options, then you can have another provider class and you can provide the implementation on how you want to create that, right? Let's say if you want to run your test on browser stack or Lambda test, you can also have different provider classes. Um, but in a, in a normal world, people normally like if conditions or you'll have switch cases to find where they want to run the test. But this way you create a provider class um, and your implementation becomes much neater. Let's go back to the test and, um, and refactor our test. For example, we have written logic inside uh, the API demos, right? APS demos provider. So I have to tell uh, Selene, uh, use this particular class to get the implementation. So now it understands it goes and execute this code and you have your browser, uh, you know, session ready. Then you can, there is a class called a Selenade APM and you can just call launch out and this will launch the app for us. Look, we have moved all the launch code out and, uh, and the code becomes much more readable. Now I want to uh, 
start the test. So uh, first of all, I um, I want to click on uh, views, right? So um, so in it APM dot. Um, so there is a method called as dollar, as we all know, and I want to find those element by text, right? Um, and this byte text is coming. We have a selector class, okay? APM selectors. So we have how we have byte class. We have APM byte. Similarly, we have APM selectors. So you can also do a static import, so you don't have to deal with it anymore. Um, and you want to find the element using views, and you want to um, basically wait for it to become uh, visible. Um, and visibility is basically a condition and you want to click on it, right? And you can add uh, static imports so your code becomes much more readable here. So if you notice, you want to launch the app, uh, you want to find the element um, by text, you want to wait for it to become visible and you want to click on it, right? So that's how easy your code will become. Right? And after that, you want to find a lot of elements, a lot of other elements, right? Uh, I don't know why, for some reasons, the back button is not as big here. Um, but yeah, anyways, I want to, oh, ah, yeah, I got the back button. So now I want to scroll until web view, right? So now let's go back and try to find the element web view. And I want to scroll to the element and I want to wait for it to become visible. And then I want to click on it. Again, guys, you can try to use uh, with text, right? and the web view something like that right you can also do all these things you can you can try out uh, different ways of finding these elements you can also try uh, using by uh, tag and attribute right you can also try all these things right so for example you don't know the tag so you can use star so basically we are constructing xpath internally um, but yeah you can try out all these uh, different uh, you know locating strategies that we have at Selenium. Uh, so once I click on, um, you know, web view, I want to click on back. So, right. So there's a back method. So you can call that. Um, once I, I want to scroll all the way up and find the expandable list, right? Let's find it using um, with text and expandable. expandable. So I'm not giving the full full value here. I'm just giving a partial value. So it, it understand it has to use contains to find the element. Again, I want to scroll up. Um, so scroll to by default go, goes down. If you want to scroll up, you have to use APM scroll options dot up. And you can always use uh, static imports. So your code becomes much more readable. Again, you can also set um, how many maximum scrolls it can perform. I can I have to perform a maximum swipe counts of five. Um, and once I did this, I want to get inside expandable list custom adapter. Again, I have to worry, don't worry about these numbers here. I can directly use custom adapter or I can use, uh, so if you notice there is two adapters here. So I can basically um, use double dollars um, with text, right? And uh, this is for just demonstration purpose. So I am going to use adapter and I'm going to get the, again, you have a lot of options to play around with the uh, collection of elements, right? So if you go here, you can, you can, you, you get a lot of options. You can use stream here and then you can operate on all the elements, right? You, you get plenty of options here. Just go ahead and explore. But in this case, I want to get the element based on index. So I use uh, zeroth index and, and then again, the same thing, right? You want to wait for it to become visible or maybe I use intractable and then I can use click, right? Again, Selenite by default waits for four seconds. Um, uh, the, the explicit wait is four seconds. Uh, for, for example, this element might take a lot of time. So I want to use, um, uh, you know, maybe 10 seconds, right? You can provide all these custom um, uh, stuff here, right? Um, Again, okay, if your application is generally very slow uh, and you don't want to add it in all the places, then there are a couple of ways that you can do it. One, you can set it as the, uh, so there's a timeout here where you can set, uh, you know, 10,000. You can set at the con configuration level or 
any of these that you are setting at the configuration class again you can basically play around with a lot of there are a lot of configurations available so you can you can basically um, explore them um, it's definitely not possible for me to cover all of them here um, if you if you if you have a lot of configuration and you don't want to set it at the code level you can set them uh, at if you create a serenade properties in your src test resources or src main resources um, you can basically uh, avoid that in the code okay so yeah so now since you have set it here you don't have to set anywhere else so this is this is also one way that you can uh, configure your uh, you know uh, general configurations uh, once you click on the adapter uh, basically i want to click on pupil names and uh, basically i want to do a long so by text people i mean you can use different locating strategy but it is easy easier for me to find an element by text and that's how a real human will interact with an element right they won't use css they don't use xpath they don't use all these complicated resource ids and all that so um people names and i want to perform a long a long click right so uh, so what i can do is there is something called as apm click options and you get a lot of these options so i want to do a long press for let's say um seconds uh, i want to do a long press for 3 seconds right so this way you 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 are trying to find an element people names and you are doing a long press for 3 seconds look at the read the of the code again at the end i want to find out uh, uh, whether an element uh, sample menu uh, is displayed right so you can just say it should be so this is the assertion for our test and it, it took us less than 2 minutes to write this test um, and that's how simple it is you don't have to really open your apm inspector in order to uh, find these elements right that's that's a, a beautiful part about using selenite for writing the test um, let's try to run uh, the test i have already my apm server up and running so let's see if the test is running so you can see the uh, commands going through the apm server so it has to scroll down now it has to go back again uh, there is no back button in ios so if you are trying to use back it will throw exception so now it has to do a long press so i think it could not find the element because i think i made a spelling mistake of people name um, instead of names um uh, i think it's right so let's go back I mean, this is a live demo, so if something goes, so people uh, names looks good. Uh, okay, maybe I have to add the weight. Uh, so let's say it should be visible uh, before we try to click or do a long press on it, um, and then this time it should work. So the benefit of using Serenade is you can leverage um, the additional locating strategies, um, the uh, the inbuilt methods, the infield configurations. It can help you to make your code much easier. Again, there is some kind of error that is happening here. So yeah, maybe yeah. Live demos are always like this. It sometimes works and it sometimes don't work. Um, but yeah, you can you can try that out. I have definitely tested this and it should work. But let's move to the uh, other questions. Uh, if you have any questions now, I can take them uh, before I continue further. So there are a couple of questions both in chat and Q and A. I'll read out to them. So one of our attendee has asked, please give more detail on desired capabilities. Yeah. So desired capabilities is is not being recommended uh, or, or deprecated in APM client eight. So you have to use uh, the the UI Automator two options for Android and XEUAT options for iOS. 
um, and that's what we have used here. Um, so. Cool. And then we have few in uh, chats. Um, yeah. So, uh, can you share the repo code repo link and with? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can share the repo link at the end of this session. There is a slide that that is the code, um, and I can also see um, some people have asked. I, I said four provider classes. Do we have option to set them in one provider class? No, you don't have to. The reason uh, that we have created different provider classes to make these, uh, you know, uh, do just one job. We don't have to combine them. Um, again, you can also use a factory method to provide instances of this, but it's all not needed, right? So um, again, to run the test, uh, yeah, you don't have to change it all the time in the property file. You can just pass it as a Maven argument. Yes, you can do that. I will explain that how, uh, but yeah, you, it is possible for you to uh, change the all the configurations via Maven arguments. You don't have to touch your cell need that property file. Cool. Yeah. I, so, uh, there are just, uh, if, if we can take uh, one more question. Um, yeah. Ibrahim is asking iOS and Android, how can you handle in the same project? Yeah, yeah, that's what we are going to see in the upcoming uh, demo, right? Uh, I'm gonna take an app that is uh, available in both Android and iOS and uh, how we could handle that. That's what else we're going to see. Um, yeah, so um, again, uh, if you want to, let's say, uh, run Maven clean test, you can pass all these configurations. Let's say serenade.browser, if you want to provide a provider class, you can do it. For example, I want to, today my application is a little slow. So I just want to change the time of today alone for let's say 10,000 seconds, right? You can pass all these parameters uh, via Maven arguments. Uh, depending upon your needs. Uh, you can set very less touched configurations in the serenaded properties. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can pass provider classes via Maven argument or something that you want to uh, configure from your GitHub pipeline or your Jenkins pipeline, you can, you can pass it via Maven arguments, right? That's how I use it. I only pass the provider classes from uh, Maven arguments. I keep all the... Uh, other configurations in the Serenade properties. Let's take another example of uh, another app. Uh, it's This is the Sauce Labs demo app. Um, you know, this app is available on both Android and iOS. Um, so, so, so if I want to just basically click on this element and I want to uh, add this thing to cart, um, and we want to do it on both Android and iOS, and we see how, how we are going to do it. So to, to save some time, um, I have already created uh, these uh, provider classes. Uh, so so if you notice, this is the uh, provider class that I'm speaking about. Um, everything remains the same. It's just that the app path, I have given the um, Android APK, which is the Sauce Lab Android APK. And for, uh, we also have one more provider class, uh, iOS provider class, where I have set this to be running on iPhone 15. And the app is sitting uh, on my apps folder that is iOS.zip file. So see Android is the corresponding uh, app and iOS is the, iOS.zip is the app that we are interested in. So these two are same app, same flow, but on different operating systems. Right, so everything remains the same. You you provide different uh, provider classes, and you can start writing your um, test. Um, again, the first thing is you can you can again go back to your basics, or you can set your uh, configuration here. Um, so this is if you want to write it on uh, the Sauce Lab Android app, you can use my demo Android app provider dot class dot get name. And you can also call uh, launch app. Once you launch the app, again, you want to find these elements, right? So um, let's say I'm opening this. We are going to use the uh, text attribute to find it. For example, this is Sauce Labs backpack. Um, so I can find it using that, right? So, um, backpack and I want to wait it to become uh, visible as usual. And then I want to click on it, right? Um, 
similarly you can you can you can move these concepts to page layers because we are dealing with uh, you know same app which has same flow in both android and ios so so instead of writing this here um, you can move this to uh, product listing screen and product description uh, description screen so, so the same source lab uh, you know locators is, is here if you notice one thing all these locators have everything in common except the text right um, everything else remains the same right they don't have anything different right so um, you you will for example if you want to create the six elements you have to create all the six so instead of that um, you know you could simply use a combined by so what i can do is combined by so combined by dot android and you can pass the android locator so the android is i'm going to find it by uh, apm selectors dot by text right and i'm going to find it by maybe i i will make this method if somebody else is passing me this i will use that to find the element right and for ios i will use um, apm by dot accessibility right and i will use the menu name that they are passing from the test list. right this way you don't have to do, use any of these uh, page factory again i'm not a big fan of page factory because you have to initialize it um uh, if you don't initialize it you will get uh, the the exceptions um you don't have to deal with any of these right again the problem with page factory is you it, you cannot make it as uh, dynamic you have to create all the six elements right instead of doing all that you could create a combined by which handles everything for you um, and then you can add the static imports so your code becomes much more easier to read and you can as usual use uh, we still need APM uh, dollar, and you could find the element and then just click on it. Right? You don't have to worry about whether the test that is, is running Android or iOS. It 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 takes care of everything by yourself. By any chance you want to check the current session is an Android or iOS, you have APM driver runner class which has uh, uh, Boolean methods. Is Android driver or is iOS driver? which can give you um, the the result of whether the session is an Android or iOS. Again, by any chance you want to uh, use, uh, you don't want to use Sel Selenide and you want to go back to your basic of APM, you can just call this and you get all your find element, you are back to your APM world, uh, right? Um, so yeah, that's how simple it is to uh, to use both APM and Selenide in, in Selenide. Again, uh, you know, if you use web element, uh, you can go, oh, hey, Amudan, I don't, we have already created all these elements. We don't want to use combined by. Is there any way that I could use uh, uh, the find element here, right? You can also do that. So for example, you can use same dollar and um, and then you can just pass the same product much, right? You don't have to make any changes anywhere. You can still use uh, your cell so this way, um, if you have already methods created, you are you are going to use Page Factory. You can still go ahead and use it, and just use these for writing assertions or waiting for elements to become so all that stuff, right? You don't have to touch your elements. We have all these comments. again. You can also change this to Selenide APM element, so that way you don't have to use dollars here, right? So uh, you can directly use something like this. Again, there are plenty of options available. Choose whatever that suits your project. But if you're starting your project from scratch, I would recommend to go with combined by. So you, you can leverage dynamic locating strategies and also Selena. Um, again, if you are using page factory, uh, normally you have to create a constructor then call page factory dot elements and all that. But with with uh, you know Selenide, you don't have to do that. Uh, instead, what you can do is you can basically um, there is there's something called a screen or objects dot screen. There's a method called a screen where you can pass for which class you want to initiate. For example, I want product listing screen dot class. So what it does is it gives you one screen object, right? So it it basically instantiate all the page page elements inside this particular class, and it also gives you back your let me close all this uh, stuff. Um, yeah, so, yeah. 
So it, it gives you back the screen object so you can directly deal with these methods, right? So you can pass, you want to select source labs, uh, source labs, back if you are if you are dealing with uh, page objects, you can use this to initialize all the page factory elements. You don't have to use constructors and, and page factory dot int elements and all that noise. Um, yeah, that's all about it. Um, if I go here, um, so let's stick to any of these. So let let me not use this, and I am trying to find the element. Uh, so. Once you get used to Selenium ecosystem, you won't go back to your API. Uh, again, the important advantage is you can use the same thing for your Selenium tests as well. We uh, Selenium also supports Selenium and also API. So once you select the product and you want to basically go to your product description screen and you have the uh, add to cart button already here, so I just want to click on it, right? So since this uses page factory, you have to initialize this, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, um, hi, or you can, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but we only have five minutes more left. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, uh, so yeah. So this is where you could you could handle both the Android and iOS. Um, again, for for example, if you want to run the same test, I can use Selenide dot uh, you know uh, the browser, and I can pass my demo Android app provider. So this way, this will run the test on Android. If I want to change it. Uh, to run it on iOS, iOS uh, driver provider. So if I if I run this command, it will um, run the test on iOS. Again, it comes with inbuilt reporting. Let's say you are you want to have reporting for your test, um, then you can also use um, the inbuilt reporting from Selenite. Uh, for example, I am using um, Chainify, so you can use extend width, and there is a text report extension dot class. And if I run the test now, you will get a beautiful uh, text report. Again, I have to add SLF4J simple for the logging library, but uh, it gives you a very reasonable report. Uh, again, integrating with Allure is also uh, a one minute work. Um, so by the time, right, the test runs, you can also add, uh, A method and uh, so the test ran. Uh, we are not worried about whether the test passes or fails. All you want to see is a beautiful report, uh, the text report. It says how long it uh, the each steps took, right? You can also see that. Again, integrating with Selenide is much easy. Uh, Selenide with Allure. I have added a couple of dependencies in my project. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is you have to just run your test. Maybe I will run uh, the this test. The provider is AP Demos Pro. So if I run this, you get a beautiful uh, Allure report. But so it says, okay, maybe I have removed some plugins, but yeah, integrating this with Allure is also very one minute, one minute work. Where like you get an Allure report and you can directly work with it. Yeah, thanks everyone. I hope you liked Selenite. Uh, and uh, sorry for uh, some features not working. Obviously it's a live demo uh, and I don't have a time to fix it right now. Thank you all for joining and thank you Madan, for sharing your experience. Uh, it's a demo, not every, uh, it's bound to break in a life, but uh, it was still a wonderful yeah. demo on how we can use uh, Selenite.